Good evening. Welcome to the evening services, the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, October the 25th. We will be singing from uh, Songs of uh, Faith and Praise. That's the songbook we use at the Northfield Church of Christ. So I hope that you have your songbook with you and you can participate. Otherwise, you get to listen to us. Uh, we'll intersperse uh, the songs with a couple of prayers, and I will deliver a lesson that I hope will be useful to all of us, including myself. So if you would uh, open your songbook to number 704, 704, we'll get started. 704. All righty, are we ready? <clears throat> bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God. There is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. And now turn your songbooks to number 359. A favorite of mine. This words and music written by Tommy Wheeler who is from Antlers, Oklahoma. We have kin out in Antlers, Oklahoma. The song is I Love the Lord. We will sing the three verses and then sing the chorus at the end. All right, the three verses and then the chorus at the end. 359. I love the Lord, for he died my soul to save. On Calvary, his dear life he freely gave. From realms above, Jesus freely came to die. That I might live someday with him on high. I love the Lord, for he saved the lost from sin. He gave them life to be whole and free again. To live on high with him never more to die. Oh, praise his name. We'll see him by and by. I love the Lord for his love so full and free. He taught us why that our love like his should be. To be like him and compassion freely give. Oh, bless his name, we then with him could live. I love the Lord, he has been so good to me. He gave his life from sin to set me free. No greater love than his could ever be. I love the Lord because he first loved me. And if you would turn to number 288. <clears throat> 
288. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, oh, thou of God and man, the Son, thee will I change. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, for this time that we can sing praises to your name and uh, offer prayers on our own behalf and on behalf of those that we care about and uh, that we can just delve into your word for uh, just a few moments. Uh, a great way to uh, finish our Lord's Day, a great way to uh, give pause and give thought uh, as we put our heads on our pillows that uh, we'll just think of the time that we spent in, in praise, the time we spent in prayer, and the time that we spent in your word. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, and help us to be the type of Christians that you want us to be. And uh, one of those things that you want from us is our prayers. And uh, another thing that you want for us is for us to beseech you on behalf of those who might have some problems, how be it physical or emotional or uh, whatever they might be. Uh, Jane and I ask a special prayer for our friend Pat as she goes through some very, very trying times in her life. I, I just pray that uh, you will lift her up, dear Heavenly Father, and that you will comfort her. Uh, I have a, a neighbor down the street who uh, approached me yesterday and asked me to pray for her father. Uh, his name is Stanley G., and he's having some uh, very serious heart difficulties. And uh, I told her that I would put him on our prayer list, and uh, I have, and uh, we're just offering this prayer on uh, his behalf. Uh, there, I know, I know there are those in our in our congregation that uh, have uh, some issues, uh, uh, whatever they might be, I just pray that you would be with them and you would uh, bless them and comfort them. 
we're so grateful that you uh, saw our families uh, back from uh, their travels, the Christiansons and the Brazinas, and pray that uh, we will enjoy uh, being able to worship with them again. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, through the furtherance of this service. Uh, be with us so that uh, we can know that uh, uh, you love it when we come into your presence. I pray this name and I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And our last song this evening will be song number 238. 238. <laughs> Wonderful, uplifting song. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me, you are the song that I sing. Okay, that completes the song part of our service. And so uh, let's get ourselves into our lesson of the evening, and I will uh, hearken you back to last Lord's Day evening. Um, I referenced a book that was done by a, a Christian couple, and uh, the book dealt with something called The Seven Desires of Every Heart. Okay, The Seven Desires of Every Heart. I brought you to Psalm chapter 37, verses 4, 5, and 6, where the psalmist says, trust in the Lord and do good. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I went one verse too high. Start with verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you desi the desires of your heart. Now, I'm not sure that these seven desires are all the seven desires that we might have. There are seven that have been chosen, and I think that each one of us has this innate desire in us. And so since there are seven desires, and I approached this last week as a, uh, uh, in, in total, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down these seven desires for the next seven weeks. And so this technically is part two of the lesson. Um, and so... Um, you uh, can probably think of uh, the needs of every heart. These are not the needs of the body. These are not the needs of air. Uh, these are not the needs of food or lodging or so forth. These are the needs of the heart. And so whether people, I guess, realize it or not, uh, what hopefully we are going to see that Christ and his body provide these needs, and by his body, I mean his church. Now, let's, let's set one thing straight. When we become a Christian, it doesn't mean that all the pleasures of life that one might engage themselves in that are wrong disappear. The temptations will still be out there. But this is a positive, upbeat lesson, and these desires should be positive, upbeat um, desires that each of us ought to have. And what we can be assured of is that God knows our needs. He knows them better than we know ourselves. And he loves us so much that I believe, and I will submit to you this evening, that he provides for all of our basic needs. So, uh, it, tell you what, let me just throw the seven at you real quickly and then let you know that we're going to begin with number one. The seven basic needs, one, and, and by the way, they are not in ascending or descending order, order of most important to least important. One, 
to be heard and understood. Two, to be affirmed. Three, to be blessed. Four, to be safe. Five, to be touched. Six, to be chosen. And seven, to be included. Uh, again, if, if, if they was, went in one ear and out the other ear, or some of them stayed, uh, that's okay. And uh, if you see me uh, on uh, the Lord's Day or, or we talk, I'll give them to you uh, verbatim, just the way I gave them to you just now. And so this evening, we're going to hone in on number one that is on that list. And that is that each person needs to be heard and understood. When we are heard and understood, it gives us all, I guess, I guess a sense of worth. And being in the body of Christ, being in the church, gives an individual to be among people who are walking down the same path that they are walking down. And I believe that our Christian brothers and sisters need to know that you and I have a desire to be heard and understood. And by that same token, they have that same desire to be heard and understood. And so, not to beat the word understood to death, um, we can be sure that in the body of Christ that a person can be surrounded by people that understand and that want to understand us. You know, the world may laugh at us. The world may ridicule us. Uh, why in the world do you spend time one day a week uh, in worshiping? Why do you meet at various times? And um, that's okay. That's almost the sticks and stones thing. But what we do know that is in Christ, we get to understand one another and we get to appreciate one another. And so with that in mind, if we turn to the epistle of James in James chapter 5, verse 16, James writes this, Confess your sins to one another. And pray for one another that you might be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. This is what a body of Christians do or does for one another. They pray for one another. They confess our sins in the way that um, we can be understood that we can be appreciated and we can be heard. Now, the Apostle Paul, the Hebrew writer, Peter, all encouraged Christians to know and to lift one another up. In Romans chapter 10, verses 10 through 12, Paul writes this, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor, not lagging, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And in another place, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 through 4, Paul put it this way, Make my joy complete by being of the same mind maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Do you get the picture here? When we do this, when we take these words of the Apostle Paul into our minds, and into our hearts, what we're saying is, I understand that my brothers and sisters in the Lord need to be heard 
and they need to be understood. And by the way, we can turn it around in a personal fashion and we can say, you know what? I know that I need to be heard and I need to be understood. These are such important words for us. This is such an important desire that we have and it is innate within us. It has to do with our worth and it has to do with the worth of others. When we consider the, um, the, the needs of others and we regard one another as more important than ourselves, what we're saying is that each member of my congregation needs to be heard. And each member of our congregation needs to be understood uh, just as I do. It is a desire of the heart. And remember what the psalmist said about that. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of our heart. I believe that one of the reasons that the church was created was so that we could serve one another's basic needs and one another's basic good positive desires. Now, these passages, the passage from James, the passage from Romans, and the passage from Philippians are great promises that can be both heard and can be understood. But at, by the same token, they are challenges to us. They're more than just words. They are um, the gospel writer and the uh, epistle writers uh, laying down, putting down the gauntlet for us. They are challenge. They are challenges for us, not only to have this need to be heard and understand, but in turn to hear and understand others to fulfill their needs. Because, remember, we were told that we need to look out for the needs of others more than our own. Don't only look at our own personal interest. And I do have a personal interest and desire to be heard and understood. But understand, all those folks out there need to be heard and understood too. With that in mind, can we become a sounding board for them? Can we become uh, that person within the congregation that says, yeah, you know what? I know you need to be heard and understood. And without just overtly saying those words, when someone wants to talk to us, stop, listen. Because uh, even though they're not saying it in so many words, what they are implying is that I'm talking to you this way. Because one of my innate desires is to be heard and to be understood. Now, let's go down another little path. And that is that God hears and God understands. As important as it is to be heard and understood by our brethren... It's just as important to be heard and understood by God. Now, is this some isolated thing that I, that I picked this up out of the air and just say, well, they, oh, I, I picked it out of the air, It'd be good to talk about. No. The Bible is, is literally filled with passages that assures us that God hears and understands. If we go to the 139th Psalm, a wonderful, wonderful Psalm, let's look at the words of the Psalmist. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 4. Here's what it says. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought 
from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. Wow, isn't that powerful? This is what our God knows. And so way back in Genesis, when God said, let's create man in our image, that is that God hears and understands us. Now, Peter gives us another aspect of God's understanding when he exhorts in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, and says, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You see what he's saying? Peter knew God cares for us. Now, the Hebrew writer also tells us to encourage one another, but uh, the, the Hebrew writer encourages us with this conclusion in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Why? Because God understands that we need to be heard and understood, and we can approach his throne of mercy. Lastly, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. See, not only does God understand that we need to be heard and understood, God even understands when we don't understand. He gets it when we don't get it. Speaking of the help that the Holy Spirit gives with regard to us being understood, Paul wrote these words in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us, for us, with groanings too deep for words. And so we have the Holy Spirit as our intercessor. The Holy Spirit is on our side to help us to understand things that we don't even know ourselves. And he intercedes with us, with God. He intercedes on our behalf. And so as I conclude the message this evening, our basic need to be heard and understood is best found in God's spiritual body on earth, that being the church. And so what we have as we look at one of the seven uh, desires of every heart and what we have as one of those desires, the need to be heard and understood. Not only do we have a God who understands, the Holy Spirit who understands and intercedes, but we also have brethren everywhere, brethren who hear and understand, and brethren who desire to be heard and understood. Let's think about that desire. Give it some thought this evening. Give it some thought to the extent that what am I doing here? What am I doing to be heard and understood? And what am I doing to help others that need to be heard and understood? And am I doing my part? I hope this message has blessed each of us. As I did the research for it, I was uplifted when I thought of this and bringing us closer to God, bringing us closer to the Holy Spirit, and mostly bringing us closer to the members of our church, Christ's body here on earth. 
with this basic need to be heard and to be understood. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this short amount of time that we had. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, we have utilized it well. I pray that you have accepted our songs of praise, that you have listened to our prayers, and that you have uh, just guided me in delivering this lesson uh, as we look at the seven desires of the heart and we propose that uh, the need to be heard and understood is one of them. Bless us as we attempt, dear Heavenly Father, to complete this desire of our heart and help others around us to complete this desire also. Be with us through this evening. Help us to have a safe and comfortable evening. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to go to sleep with you on our heart and help us to wake with you on our heart. Bless us, comfort us, be with us. I ask this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Have a very, very safe day. Have a safe evening. And may God bless you all. Amen.